talk a little bit about a project we, we touched on before, but now we've got some of your colleagues here, perhaps we can go into it in a bit more detail. Yes, well, I'm meeting here today um, to talk about progress that um, people have been making research in some of the plant products which have been based on the, the forest garden at Dolby Forest. So in the group today we've got four students from Yorkshire Coast College who are researching as part of a summer project individual plants to make different art products such as inks and dyes and papers from a specific species of plants planted at the in the forest garden. So what we thought we would do is just go around the group and introduce each person at one at a time um, and then ask them what plant they've been looking at, um, how their research has been going, what they've discovered and maybe look at some of the products that they've started to make from those plants. And But this is just a small selection of the students that you're working with? Isn't it? it is, yes. There is a larger group. Some of them unfortunately couldn't come today. So there are a couple of other students that um, we'll talk to later and also some other volunteers who are researching food products and they'll also hopefully join us at a later date as well. Okay, okay so, so if start we start on. with um, Joy, um, she's, right. she's been looking at various tree species to look at inks, so she can tell us a bit more We're about that. Well, I've been looking at the oak and the alder and the alder. And uh, I've been trying to ex extract pigments from the roots and the leaves and the bark. So I've had varying results. Um, the alder has given me some really nice results. Uh, but the best one was um, the oak with the oak gall, which gave me a fantastic black mm -hmm. ink. So I'm quite excited about that. And I'm planning on doing landscapes with the inks. Can I, can I just ask you, So, have you got any um, sort of research that you've done to show how you can get the inks out, you know, or I, mean, I wouldn't know where to start I've with got, something I've like that. I've lots of research, oh, okay. I control the internet and I've actually um, got together some recipes, so I've written them all down, so I'm quite excited Great. about that. And I've got some of the results from the alder, um, which is a lovely reddy colour. But the interesting thing is that it actually gets darker with time. So no matter what I put on this paper, I know it's going to change. So I'm quite uh, interested in seeing what happens as it goes along. So that's quite a light one. And are these, are these inks that would have been you know, produced in the olden days with this, you know, using these recipes, or is it sort of much more contemporary? Well, the oak girl's quite exciting because that one is from medieval times. Uh -huh. And that's from when the monks would do the manuscripts. And it bites like an acid into parchment, and it does the same to paper. So I haven't any examples that I can show you of that one, um, because I actually did it yesterday. So, <laughs> so I've got a way to go with that yet. Right, brilliant. But um, as well as uh, that, I've been doing plant printing. So, you know. Oh, it, beautiful. It, it shows quite a lot of detail. So yeah, that's quite interesting. And I've been using the ink before it's actually an ink um, as a dye. So we have the felt that's all from alder leaves. So it's different result, as you can see, yeah. from the paper. Yeah. And then we have the tree itself. These are pieces of oak, which I thought would make quite nice buttons for crack yeah, work. Absolutely, yeah. And do they need, have you, I mean, do they need to be preserved in some way in order to stop them splitting or is there? Uh, they will do. The wood will have to be seasoned and then when that's already prepared and dried out, that will be sealed. So it's all early days, it's all the initial experiments. And how long have you been working on this for? When did we start? I can't remember. Um, <laughs> well, the project started in May, and so the students have been working on it since then. And all the work that they're producing is going to go into a guidebook, which will help other people use these recipes and also use the forage 
garden products sustainably as well. So since May, and it'll be ongoing until next May. But this forms part of your college course. This will it be part does, of your portfolio, presumably. It does, because I, I work um, mostly with inks. So actually making my own inks and seeing where they've come from and just how sustainable and eco-friendly, you know, you can make a, yeah. a product. Um, it, it just gives you an insight you know, into the sort of thing that you can do with natural... And with making inks, does that mean that you've got roots boiling away in your kitchen and, and you know, <laughs> how does, <laughs> yeah? Yes, I have a big yeah. stock pot full of older roots as we speak, so. All right, <laughs> so. okay. Great. Yeah. Okay, so who's, what's, what's the next? So the next person we'll look at will be, Maggie, do you want to tell us about your paper? No. I'm very interested in paper and the surfaces that I can work on at college. And so I had a look at making paper, using recycled paper, and putting in lots of organic matter that was, um, we identified was in the garden. There's marigold, there's pieces of leaves. And I'm finding this really, really, I don't know, it's getting me so excited, I don't know when to stop. <laughs> so I'm starting to use different papers and that's a different paper again and a different method. So I make the paper first and then I colour it and add in pieces of organic matter. Okay. So I could, if I wanted to, use the back and actually paint on it. Yeah? Yeah. So these are going to be the, the pages in the book, is that right? But you're... Um, for your, for some your of them are. So, some, some are. are. There's far um, too many for us to use. There's far to too many. Good. Now this one here, I've dyed the paper with, um, what did I use? Blueberries All to right. start with. Um, and then, if you look on the back, that's impregnated with different, different pieces of paper, uh, coloured paper and plant matter. If you turn it round again, because I've decided to put a leaf on it, um, I've got a negative impression of the leaf. And right. so it all shows through. It's, it's really, really exciting. Um, a different way of doing it would be to emboss plant life in between layers of paper. So how many layers have you got on there then? On this one I have about nine. Wow, nine just so layers. really sort of thin layers. And you put a layer thin of layers. leaves and then another layer and Yes, so on. until I get the effect that I want. And then again, I have that image, but if I wanted to, I could turn it over and do a collage. Right. So what I'm producing are services for me to eventually work on and take forward. And it's going to improve my work, hopefully. And had you ever done paper making before? No. Brilliant. So no. it's the start no. of a It's new... lovely, messy, it's beautiful. You have all these buckets with all different paper in, you know, and you add stuff to them, and then yeah. you make your paper. Then you sit there and think, what on earth can I do with this? And all sorts of ideas then start start coming. Yeah, fantastic. It is, it's exciting. And Maggie's got some really interesting ideas on how to take this forward in her own artwork next year. So I don't know if she wants to just tell us a little bit about those. Well, it started me thinking about the very start of the process of life really in nature and looking at looking at the structures of leaves, looking at the structures of lichen and, and, and going right the way back and possibly photographing and magnifying magnifying the images because the structures in nature are so beautiful mm. and then I'm going to design my second year's work around microscopic images, what we can't see normally and this, is, this has started me off. Can I just ask you what course you're all doing. Is it the same course? Yes. Uh, what, what is it? We're doing a BA in Fine and Applied Arts at Hull, but we're actually at um, the campus here in Scarborough, oh, okay. Westwood campus. And that's, is that kind of a distance course or full? No, full, full time. time. Right. Full time. And so you're all in year one, just starting. Well, we're going into year two. Um, the youngest on our course, I think, is 21, and the oldest is me. Okay, so, <laughs> so it's the full, the full span. Right, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Well, good luck with all your paper making. Okay. So who's, 
Who's next? Um, I think next we'll do it to Gillian. Okay. Gillian. Right, well I've been working with plant dyes and using uh, plants from the garden uh, to, to make dyes. I'm particularly interested in dyeing silk. Um, it's something completely new to me, so I found it fascinating. So I've just got a few examples here um, of things I've just picked out of my garden. Um, these are some pieces of silk I've dyed in marjoram flowers, um, which I've made a dye from. Um, here we've got some raspberry dye that I made. Uh, again, this is marjoram leaves, and here's some basil. Um, but I just find it fascinating to think you can just go in the garden and pick these things, and they're all there. And it's as easy as making a cup of tea, which I just didn't know at all. I always thought, you know, making dyes was something quite complicated. Because the word mordant comes into my mind yeah. with dyes. Is that because my mother used to do it? She used to spin wool and and dye it yeah. and stuff. But it again, there was always lots of stuff bubbling around in the background. Mm. How do you fix it onto well, a fabric? Well, it's actually not that hard, really. Um, I've got two examples here of some silk. One without using a mordant, um, and that was just just. Uh, boiling it for about 20 minutes in the in the dye once it had been made. And here's an example of some silk that I had mordanted. Um, but it's so easy. It was just literally um, a little bit of alum, which is a natural product. Um, it's um, a salt of aluminium, which is just mined um, naturally. Um, it's a little end of a teaspoon of that mixed with a bit of cream of tartar from the cupboard, just mixed in, soaked overnight, and it's mordanted, um, and then popped it in the dye. And it's done. So I've really got the bug now. I'm desperate to get back out there and pick as many things as I can and um, start boiling things and up. And they're not all sort of dull, earthy colours, are they? I mean, you've got no, some... Quite, got, yeah. Yeah, they're, really, they're lovely. Quite nice colours. Um, and also, I've got two young children, so I've been quite interested in using herbs and things that, um, you know, we could eat. Because I've often got children playing and things bubbling away on the, on the cooker, so I didn't want any nasty fumes coming off. So, you know, anything that's sort of natural, doesn't necessarily, if it's natural it doesn't necessarily mean it's not toxic, but I've been using sure. plants that, that are non-toxic. Um, so what's the next stage with the, with the fabrics that you're dyeing, what would you... Well, um, what I'm hoping to do is make some silk scarves and use these dyes as a base colour, and then I'm going to try crushing um, other things into them to, to get some sort of pattern onto the silk. I've had to go with some nasturtiums here, um, and I'm getting various results, they're not particularly colourful so I'm going to try um, different ways to get the colour to come out a bit more um, so that's the way I'm going with this particular project um, but it's very different to what I've been doing at college so it's all quite new and exciting to me. I mean that's the thing that I'm sort of getting from all of you so far that it's very experimental mm. you know you're going off and trying yeah. things that you might not have done but it's really inspiring you yeah. to to go um, forth. It's been fascinating doing the research as well because there, there's a lot of information out there but all, there's almost too much in a way it's it's where do you start so um, it's quite nice just to, to get stuck in and have a go and I think it'll be lovely producing some recipes that other people can have a go at doing um, and just have a sort of simple way in really. I can see that this book that's going to be published is going to be really inspirational because of these examples and well, it's stuff that anyone can do, really. It is, and we're hoping to inspire people to go and use the garden at Dolby Forest. That's why it was established, was to, to encourage foraging, but um, sustainable foraging, so people will know it's a safe site where they can go and gather the materials. And the book will help them. It will help guide them through the early stages because the work of the students has been to research and find the best recipes and the best ways of using some of the plants there. So finally... So finally... <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least... We have Karen. Hi Karen. Hi, yeah. Um, the plant that I've chosen um, to research is Gallium aparine. It's a very, very common sticky weed found in hedgerows all over the place. The other name, common name for it is cleavers, or it can be known as goosegrass bed straw. But it's one of those plants that has little bobbles that everybody knows that sticks on your clothes yep. and is really irritating or on your dog. So why did you choose that one then? <laughs> well, I like, I really liked the way that it grows. Um, it grows upwards towards the sky, but it grows in clusters that n stick to each other. So the plant's not only sticking to everything else around it, it's sticking to each other. And 
as it grows, it becomes stronger and stronger as the thicker it gets. Right. And uh, as I've um, gone around the countryside, it's a, it's a popular um, planting hedgerows around farmland. Um, I've seen the way that it, it builds up into almost sculptural pieces around the hedgerows, just massive matted um, areas. So f from an art point of view, I was really interested in it, right. but also um, for this research project, I was interested in looking at its uses, because it's a plant that's been around forever, sure. a nuisance plant to most people, I'm sure. Um, but it has um, medicinal qualities. It's, um, you can use the, um, the small pods and the leaves to make teas, which have um, diuretic properties. Um, it's, an ed it's an edible plant, and the leaves have been used for years and years and years in casseroles. People use it um, as a vegetable. Um, can also be used as a, a recipe I found called gallium lemonade, which I haven't been brave enough to try yet. <laughs> but um, yeah, it has yeah lots of medicinal properties. It's also um, used as a skin tonic because it has a stringent, quali a stringent quality in it. Um, so I'm hoping to make soaps, for instance, for my, for my um, making products. Wow. Um, gel, yeah. <laughs> All of, all of this out of just one plant. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. And again, did you go on the internet to find out this information? Or? Uh, I've been into the local library. Um, my friend Jill over there told me what the plant was called because I'd only ever known it as Sticky Bob as a child. Right. So <laughs> I had to find out this appropriate name first. Um, and yeah, there's lots of information on the internet. And it's amazing. Um, you, can, you can look at, I've looked on the Horticultural um, Society, um, I've looked in, on the DEFRA website to see where it's um, prevalent, where it grows prevalent. And, um, but you can, you can go on to <coughs> websites, um, you can go on to shopping sites like eBay because you can buy the gallium tea anywhere. You can buy gallium right. cider vinegar. All it, it wasn't until I started researching this that I, I found all that this is it's used as a herb, I think, okay. uh, would be a more appropriate term. But um, yeah, you can find it anywhere in all sorts of things. So what have you got here that you can uh, show? Okay, um, well a, f a few of my colleagues, two of whom are here, um, we rented a print studio and we did some just um, basic mono printing of the plants. And, you can see here yeah. how, what a delicate plant it is. Yep. They almost look sort of <coughs> ja Japanese, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. What it is, but it's, it is, it's, that, it's very that, delicate. On the print it's come out as a very simple line, so that's yeah. really good. But here you can see where it's oh. already sticking to each other. It just sticks to itself. Yeah. So those are just really enjoyable. And in the pressing, some of the sap came out of the plants. <laughs> and it's interesting, isn't it, when you just focus on one particular plant and you sort yeah. of find out everything yeah. about yeah. one particular... So you're the probably UK expert on this now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't think so. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been very interesting to work with. It's been quite hard to preserve it because it's such a beautiful green colour. As soon as it's pulled up, it starts to dry out, of course, turns and turns brown. And I found um, when I was trying to make some sculptural pieces at home with it that it, it very soon became crisp. And it was so I'm going to have to do a little bit more research to see if I can freeze it and to preserve it some way so that when I go on to make the soap products and um, I'm thinking about candles too, that it will still be that lush, lively green colour. So um, brilliant. So Jean, I mean, just talking to your four students and the amount of work and the amount of information that everyone's finding out. And I can't even imagine this book is going to be like Encyclopedia Britannica. Well, it's, I mean, it how quite, do you decide what to It include? is quite worrying that it is growing and the more we find out, the more fascinated we get. So at some point we've got to draw a line and start selecting what's to go in, into this rather small introductory book. But we're already talking about perhaps pulling the research together in another way as well and do something more specific for artists to encourage more more um, focus on sustainability in art 
and using natural products to make um, artworks. So in a way the students have, have worked on the project in two levels. They've been doing the basic research to make useful products from the plants, but they've also taken it a step further to find materials that they can then carry forward in a more creative way to create their own individual artworks. And we've been very fortunate because the North York Moors have offered us a, a month-long exhibition next summer. So if people are interested, they can come and see all of this work, the prints and the processes that are behind the artworks on show next summer between May and June at the Danby Moors Gallery. So, and also they'll be able to buy our book, yeah. which should be published then, <laughs> volume one. <laughs> So you'll all be here for next summer, um, being part of the exhibition and showing your work. And maybe running workshops too. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, brilliant. Thank, thank you all very much. Good luck with the, the months ahead and all the work that you've got to do. Thanks. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you.